Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Question Time with myself, Harry Knight. Once again, I'm going to be going through some of the comments that you've left for us on various social media posts and doing my best to answer your questions. Now, our first comment this week comes from Christian Fleischmann. Uh, Christian, my apologies uh, for butchering your name, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, Christian was reaching out with relation to last week's episode, which if you haven't seen it, I'll put links down below. But um, last week's episode, one of the questions we spoke about was the changes in buoyancy that you would get if you moved between a sort of standard weight polyurethane foam and a light polystyrene foam uh, board. And very brief summary, uh, we figured out that you would probably get about a 30% reduction in weight on the surfboard, uh, which, you know, theoretically would give you 30% more buoyancy on the board. However, uh, we then decided that once you put the surfer in on top, that would be reduced down to a 1 or 2% difference that most people probably wouldn't notice. Now, Christian reached out with uh, the point that since human beings are neutrally buoyant in water, wouldn't we therefore be able to take full advantage of the, uh, you know, this 30% increase in buoyancy from the lighter foam in the core? And this is a really interesting point, and I think it's probably something that uh, a lot of people were thinking as they watched that video. So I want to just dive in on this a little bit. So if we get the, the same board that we were talking about last week, which we, I think we were using a 30 litre short board for our example. Um, so we said that the board had 30 litres, and that if we submerged this 30 litre surfboard down into the water, it would produce an upwards force um, that could support about 30 kilograms of weight. Okay, it would actually be in newtons, it would be about 300 newtons of upwards force, but it's going to support 30 kilos of weight. Now, the board itself only weighs three kilos. Okay, uh, now what that means is that we're actually only using about 10% of the buoyancy of the uh, board to float itself. Okay. If you just put the board in the water with no person on it, what you're going to see is about 10% of the board, about three litres of its volume under the water, and the other 90% of the board above the surface of the water. Now, obviously, when we uh, attach a Harry Knight to the surfboard, okay, here's a nice accurate drawing of a Harry Knight. Hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, I weigh in at about 80 kilos, it's about 180 pounds, okay? Now, this is significantly heavier. We've now got 83 kilos of weight uh, and 30 kilos of buoyancy, so we're definitely going to sink down into the water. Now, as uh, Christian pointed out, human beings, once they're submerged into the water, we are kind of neutrally buoyant. Um, muscle and bone are, are heavier than water and tend to sink. Fat is lighter and tends to float. Most human beings kind of fall into a realm where if we take in a really big deep breath, we'll probably float. And if we let all the air out of our lungs, we'll probably start to sink a little bit. But you know, on average, we're, we're fairly neutrally buoyant. Now, what that means is that as we uh, submerge into the water, once we're in the water, we don't um, push the board any lower. If this was 80 kilos of, of lead, say, you know, which is very, very dense, then the whole thing would just sink to the bottom of the ocean. Um, but it, it, it's not. It's, it's, uh, we're about the same density as water. But what does happen is we do still have this 30 kilos of positive uh, buoyancy is 300 newtons of flotation from uh, the surfboard. Now, what that means is that of these uh, 83 kilos, 30 kilos of it is going to be pushed up out of the water, which is why, you know, when you sit on a surfboard, you know, the water line's probably somewhere around here, and your shoulders, head, chest, uh, all of that is, is clear of the water. Um, when we lie down and we're paddling, it's going to be my head, my shoulders, my back, maybe my bum uh, out of the water as I'm paddling this 30 litre board. That's from this, this buoyancy that, that is available to us. Now, if we reduce the weight of the surfboard and we take the board down to a two kilogram board by using lightweight uh, EPS foam in the middle, we've dropped, although the board has gotten much lighter, the overall package that is being supported 
uh, has gone from 83 kilos to 82 kilos. Now that is a 1.2% difference. Um, but the surfboard, the, the, the 300 newtons of positive buoyancy from the surfboard is still going to lift 30 kilos of weight above the surface of the water, okay? To, because that's, that's the point where, where the system, uh, you know, is balanced. Um, so we're really looking at, you know, how much, uh, what percentage of, of this does 30 kilos represent? And uh, it's uh, around about uh, 36%. Um, it's 366 uh, percent uh, for that, and it's 36.1% uh, for um, the, the heavier board. So it's actually, it's, it's less than half a percent difference uh, once we start thinking about the rider as we go from lightweight uh, EPS foam to standard weight polyurethane foam. So actually, my maths last week was, was wrong. It's actually not uh, a 1% difference. It's actually probably closer to a half a percent difference. So there we go. Um, I hope uh, that kind of clears it up. I hope that my apologies uh, that, that my explanation last week uh, didn't, didn't explain this quite as clearly as it, it probably should have done. But uh, yeah, cool. All right. OK, so our next question this week comes from Phil Halloran. Uh, and Phil was asking, whether the volume of a surfboard or the surface area of it is more important as we transition from sort of lying down and paddling to standing up and surfing. Um, this is a, a really interesting question because you know a lot of people get very fixated on volume. We've been talking about the volume of surfboards for the last couple of episodes. Um, it's something people get very fixated in. So the volume of a board, um, uh, yeah, get the dyslexic to do the writing. Uh, so the volume of the board we use to produce the buoyancy, okay, which is what we've been talking about. Uh, okay, um, the surface area of the board, so where volume is, is, is 3D, the length, the width, and the thickness. The surface area, we're just talking about the uh, 2D profile of the board, you know, just the length and the width, the, the, the shape of the board, okay, and we're using that to produce lift, okay? Hydrodynamic lift, all right? This is really, really important. Uh, the big thing is buoyancy is a static force. It doesn't change, okay? So that surfboard pushed down into the water produces the same amount of buoyancy regardless. Doesn't matter uh, what angle you push the board in, uh, whether the board's moving or whether it's still, the board being pushed down to the water is gonna produce the same amount of buoyant force. Now. Lift is a dynamic force, okay? And it changes based on lots and lots of parameters, based on our speed, based on the angle of attack, okay? As the, the board moves uh, nose up, nose down, rolls from rail to rail, uh, the amount of lift is gonna be, be changing, okay? Now, what you can probably see from this, the, the quick answer is surface area is more important, okay? When we're down and paddling on the board, we're relying, the board's in what's called displacement mode, okay? We're using the volume, the displacement of the board to create buoyancy to support our weight, and we're pushing water aside as we paddle. Now, in this mode, there's actually a limited top speed that you can do, okay? The board will not go any faster um, whilst staying in displacement mode. So in order to go faster, we need to lift the board up out of the water and start skimming across the surface, okay? which is what we call planing, okay? uh, just like a speedboat. And to do that, we're using the surface area of the board to generate this lift. Now, the interesting thing is that as the board lifts up out of the water, there is less surface area in contact with the water, which would reduce the amount of lift generated. However, as we lift out of the water, there is also less friction, which means our speed increases, which means the smaller surface area generates more lift. As you can see, this gets quite complicated. The really nice thing is, it's kind of a self-balancing system, okay? We were talking before about, you know, a combination of me and the surfboard weighing about 83 kilograms. Well, it's gonna balance out when that 83 kilograms is supported by the lift being generated, okay? If the board starts to go faster, it's going to lift out of the water so that there's less surface area in contact with the water, but it's still producing that 83 
kilos lift. It can't carry on lifting because we would transition, we, we, we're working on the borderline between air and water and, and you know air is so much less dense, there's no way that a surfboard is going to produce enough lift that I can stand on it and start flying into the air. So there's always a small percentage at least of the surfboard that's in contact with the water. Okay. As we maybe slow down, okay, and we're moving less quickly, then that small surface area produces less lift, which means the board sinks down into the water, more surface area, therefore more lift, and it self-balances itself in that way. Now, where that can you know, potentially cause problems is if you have a very light surfer on a very wide, high surface area board, you know, what you may end up with is, is such a small part of the board in contact with the water that it could become quite hard to surf. You know, it might uh, not have very much rail in contact with the water, say, uh, and it may become a little hard to control. Uh, and this is why boards that are designed to operate at high speeds um, or boards that are surfed by smaller people are generally have those, those uh, metrics reduced down a little bit. Okay, so a really good way to think about it is the volume of the board and its buoyancy. That's sort of like your starting place. We've got to get to a point where 83 kilos of upwards force is being generated uh, in order to support me. Now, if I get on a 30 litre shortboard, um, I'm supporting, what did we say before? It's about 36% of my body weight is already above the water. So we've got to get the remaining up and out. Now, if instead I was to surf an 80 litre longboard, well, now almost all of my weight is being, well, all of my weight, we've got, you know, a bit of extra weight with the surfboard, but, but, but most of the weight is actually up and out of the water. So I don't need to produce a huge amount of lift to actually get the whole thing up and riding out the, uh, out of the water, which is why uh, longboard, you know, you can catch smaller, softer, slower moving waves because we're not as reliant on the, on the lift to get us up and going. We, we do still need the lift, um, the board won't really operate um, properly in displacement mode because like we said, it's got this limited top speed. We've got to get it up and planing. But because the longboard is so much lighter loaded um, by comparison, it's going to do it much more easily. So I hope that answered the question. Phil, yeah, the short answer, um, the buoyancy is like our starting point, but it's really, it's the surface area and it's the lift generated by the surface area that's going to get us up and riding and surfing. And the interesting thing, of course, is that it's really hard to find out the surface area. It's really hard to compare surface areas of two different boards. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, I hope I'll see you all next week. For now, take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.